हेलो हाय एंड नमस्ते आई एम योर रेगुलर होस्ट उषा सबकोटा दिस टाइम आई एम विथ यू बैंकिंग फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट दिस इज द टॉपिक ऑफ बैंकिंग एंड फाइनेंस हियर वी विल फाइंड आउट why banking uh, financial statement is different from other industry financial statement and we deals with the balance sheet income statement profit and loss account a bank financial statement are quite different from those of a firm in any other industry in their role or as financial intermediaries bank have to take considerable financial risks and their financial statement merely reflect these risks examine the latest financial statement of a commercial bank and compare the components of with a manufacturing or a trading company you will notice several interesting points of difference for example to understand and the uh, an analyze a bank financial statement you will have to first understand why the sources of funds are primarily short term in nature payable or demand or with short term maturities second the financial leverage is very high in other words the equity base is very low the proportion of fixed assets is very low and so is the operating leverage a high proportion of bank funds are investment invested in loans and advances or investment all of who is subject to interest rate volatility furthermore when deposits rates changes the cost of funds also changes which in turn would impact the pricing of bank assets thus three thus there seems to be considerable risks embedded in banking operations high financial risks due to the high leverage high interest rate risks uh, which would affect the profitability and high liquidity risks which might endanger the solvency of the bank in order to understand these risks it is necessary to learn to read and analyze the financial statement of bank let us therefore explore the nature of each item in the financial statement in some details now move towards the banking liabilities or bank liabilities source of bank fund are classified according to type of debt and equity components the various debt instrument are different on the basis of maturity check writing and other facility the issuance they carry and their tradability in the market till now a few decades back the banking industry in many countries was highly regulated and did not exhibit much restriction in fixing interest rate the following constitute the major part of bank's liability account which represent the source of fund for the bank in addition the major economics various forms of regulation and legislation protect these account first is net worth the net worth of bank is measured by the aggregate of its share capital reserve and surplus in any enterprise capital is required to absorb unexpected losses a bank typically sustains losses when the value of its assets is eroded leading to fall in profitable due to the loss of income the loss in liquidity when the value of assets is eroded many even threaten the very existence of bank deposits the primary sources of borrowed fund from a typical bank is deposits predetermine predominantly raised from the public we will see in subsequent uh, subsequent slide the importance of deposits deposits are grouped for the transaction as well as balance sheet purpose based on the purpose and maturity 
they are broadly classified as deposit payable on demand and deposit payable after a specific period. Deposit payable on demand are generally called transaction deposit or uncalled de uh, deposits. Third is borrowing. Banks can borrow from the markets both domestic and overseas and institutions and banks and from the central banks. Such borrowings are typically contribute a lower proportion to the bank. Total sources of fund generally borrowing are used to show the liquidity position to create the specific assets. Generally, banks have the mainly three types of assets. They are investment, loan and advance, fixed assets and other assets. Investment securities help banks in several ways. They help to meet liquidity needs, earn interest, take advantage of interest rate movement and are part of the bank treasury functions. At the time of investment, bank must be able to decide the objectives of buying the designated securities, whether the security are to be held maturity or are meant for the short term investment under the held for training or available for sale category. Loan and advances. This category of assets is the most important for banks because it defines their roles as financial intermediaries and impact their profitability to a large extent. These assets also carry a high level of default risks and each assets or class of assets exhibit the unique characteristics that render the generalization and monitoring difficulties. Fixed assets in sharp contracts, uh, contracts to the other industrial and service sector, bank own relatively few fixed assets compared to non-financial form. Bank operates with lower fixed cost and exhibit lower operating leverage. To our let's move. contingent liability. A contingent liability is an off-balance sheet uh, item. How it is dif different from a liability on the balance sheet? A liability arises out of the pa uh, present obligation as a result of past events. Further settlement of liability is expected to result in an outflow of resources by way of payment to creditors. A contingent liability, on the other hand, is a possible obligation which could arise depending on whether some uncertain future event occurs. It could also arise where there is a present obligation but payment is not probable or the amount cannot be measured reliably. In, in the case of bank, contingent liability can generate substantial income in good items. A major contributor to contingent liability is the non-funded business that banks take on, such as issue of letter of credit, opening the letter of guarantee, and derivative dealings. Let's see the income statement of the bank. There are four things mainly. Net interest income, that is the interest income earned by the company uh, minus interest income paid by the company. And burden is the provision burden is the non-interest income less uh, non-interest expenses the difference between non-interest income and non-interest expenses is also known as the burden provisions there could be the provisions for loan loss and market risks and there is loan loss and market risks taxes bank need to pay the various taxes and it affect the income statement Let's see the financial statement of banks operating it, uh, in Nepal under the basis of NFRS uh, standard which is recently published uh, on NRV directives. Assets parts, there are cash and cash equivalent due from Rastra Bank, placement with bank and financial institution, derivative financial instrument, other trading assets, loan and advances to bank, bank and financial institution, loan and advances to customers, investment securities, current tax assets. 
and liability and equity side liability due to the bank and financial institution due to the nepal rashtra bank derivative financial instrument deposit from customers borrowings current tax liabilities provisions deferred tax liabilities other liabilities debt security issued subordinate liabilities assets investment in sub subsidiaries investment in associates associates investment in property property and equal equipments goodwill and intangible assets deferred tax assets other assets equity share capital share premium return earning reserves these are the headings of um, balance sheet of financial statement of banks operating in nepal now moves toward the consolidated consolidated statement of profit and loss uh, uh, made by the banking and financial uh, institution which are doing business in nepal first is interest income and second is interest expenses then net interest income comes from first minus second fees and commission income fees and commission expenses their difference is net fee and commission income net interest fee and commission income is summation of net interest income plus net fees and commission income trading income and other operating income provide the total operating income with the important charge for loan and other losses will get the net operating income and after that operating expenses are personal expenses other operating expenses and depreciation and amortization this will provide operating profit later on non operating income and non operating expenses provide the profit before income tax and income tax expenses current tax minus deferred tax then will get the profit for the year then profit attributed to the equity holder of the bank and non controlling interest profit for the year will and earning per share is further divided into the basic earning per share and diluted earning per share let's see the some consolidated statement for comprehensive income profit for the year other comprehensive income net income tax items that will be not classified to profit or loss that is gain or loss from investment in equity instrument major at fair value gain or losses on revaluation actual gain or losses on defined benefit plans income tax relating to above items that provide net other comprehensive income that will not be reclassified to profit or loss b item that are or may be class reclassified to profit or loss gain or losses on the cash flow is exchange gain or losses income tax relating to above items and reclassify to the profit or loss net other comprehensive income that are may be the reclassified to profit or losses see share of Uh, other comprehensive income of associated accounted is for the equated method other comprehensive income for the year net income tax total comprehensive income for the year will be the calculated this is the uh, unaudited uh, financial statement of citizen bank which is i get through the uh, website of investment citizen international bank then you will see this uh, on the every bank website because this is mandatory by the nepal rashtra bank recently thank you for listening me if you really like this um, video please do not forget to share and comment on my video thank you